y'all doing? I'm Justin Waller. I'm from Benton, Arkansas. Today we're going to go over something very beautiful and life-giving. It's how to see the true powers of the Holy Spirit's voice and not just hear them. You see, the words of the Bible light our path, but the numbers are how we diligently seek His gorgeous voice. Each number has a specific name that God calls it, and if you call it what God calls it, you'll see it more clearly. Each voice that the Holy Spirit uses is a different category for each number is what it is. The voice of the Lord is the true powers of the Holy Spirit, so don't misconstrue what we're talking about here. The true powers of the Holy Spirit is the one who's speaking to us through these numerical patterns. You understand? Each pattern has a different category, though. So today we're going to show you how the threes and fives go together in season together. But you always go in sequence. You say the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. You wouldn't say the, the Son, the Father, the Holy Ghost. Okay, guys? So you always start in sequence. So three comes first. Now, three in the Bible means direction to God. Okay? We call it number three. He calls it direction. If you call it three, you're going to see three. But if you call it direction, you're going to see direction. So if God, G-O-D, and I am, I A M, He wants you to be directed to Him. By the author of the verse in the chapter, by Old Testament poetry, New Testament. But the main one that directs you to God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now, the Holy Spirit is the third in line because the, He's the Lord of righteousness. He leads us into righteousness. Therefore, every time you see that three in the Bible, that's what it's pertaining to. The Holy Spirit's leading them into righteousness. So Abraham, he saw where to sacrifice Isaac on the third day, and Moses was hid for three months. And Jonathan shot three arrows for David's direction. And Mordecai and Esther fasted three days and three nights. And Naomi gave Ruth three reasons to go back to her family. And Ruth and Boaz had Obadiah, Jesse, and David to start the lineage of Jesus. And, and, and it doesn't matter what the situation or the situation or the, or the scenario is. Jonah got thrown over the boat into the belly of the fish and then to dry land. He reached dry land in chapter 3 for direction from God. And he was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And it took him three days to go to Nineveh. So it doesn't matter the situation, the scenario, or the circumstance. Every single three to God is direction. Peter denied Jesus three times. Right? John, James, and Peter went to the Mount to see Elijah, Moses, and Jesus, and they asked for that build three great tabernacles. There's two men that passed the stranger by, but that third one, the good Samaritan, he picked him up and took him to the innkeeper. See? Every three in that Bible means direction from God. If you look up Numbers chapter 22, Balaam starts to go towards this path he ain't supposed to go down. An angel steps in the path of him and the donkey's way. The donkey gets whipped three times, and she speaks. Because, because she was trying to warn him. This proves that the donkey really talked. This proves Romans 2.11. For there is no partiality with God. There is no partiality with the word. What he did for one, he'll do for all. If three means direction in the Bible, it still means direction to this day. Okay, guys? You'll see that here in just one minute. Now, the facts is five. Five in the Bible to God means G-R-A-C-E. Every time you see five in your life, that's what you're receiving, grace from God, okay? You need F-A-I-T-H for grace, G-R-A-C-E. And when you get receive both of those, you receive peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, peace that passes all understanding. <laughs> see how it works? He never fails us. He never fades. David had five stones when he went up against Goliath, okay? That's how you see fives is grace. Every five-letter word in this life means grace. Jesus... Okay, mercy, see, glory, every single one. It never fades, never fails. Now you're going to see the threes and fives go together and season together. In John chapter 5, it's a grace chapter. Verse five, Chapter 5, it's a grace chapter. Verse 2 says, Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool which is called in Hebrew Bethsaida, having five porches. So there's five. So that's two fives. And then the th third set of five is now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. That's who the grace was for. So that's three sets of fives right there is what you're seeing. Why? Because it started in the B-I-B-L-E, Bible, it's five letters. Well, it's split up into the Old Testament, Poetry, New Testament. You got the Old Testament, right? But then the poetry books is Psalms, uh, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes and Songs of Solomon, and then you got the New Testament. So it's split up in three sections. See? Old Testament, poetry, New Testament, but it's still five words. Just like B I B L E is five letters. So the fives go with fives. You're going to see that today. Just like Jesus in the three crosses, three nouns that hung him, three names above him, rose on the third day, went through life, death, and resurrection. 
preached the gospel for three years and he got crucified at the age 33 because God shows no partiality in the people or the word of God. That means what he did for those people in that biblical day, he still does for the, us people in this time era today. With the same biblical numbers and the same pattern and the same, and the same everything lines up to what it's supposed to be. You see how it works? Well, let's don't stop there. Because it don't stop there. <laughs> let's go to John chapter 6. Pay attention to this now. John chapter 6, starting at verse 5. You're going to see that on the next testament too. Starting at verse 5. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, seeing a great multitude coming toward him. He said to Philip, where? Five letters. Shell? Five letters. We buy three and four go together and season together. And we ask y'all and urge y'all to look through the videos and see the, the title the, uh, that says that the threes and fours go together and season together. So this is not an author confusion because they really do. Just like three and five go to season. So where? Five letters. Shell? Five letters. We buy go together five letters and bread is five letters. So that's one, two, three, four. Four sets of five letter words with one, two, three, four, five. And that's red words. Red, three words, five letters. Red, blood is five letters. See how that works? <laughs> See how powerful and almighty God's evident is? He's so powerful. You really think a man could put that all together? You really think a group of men could really put that all together? You think after all these videos we showed y'all that lines up to God's numerical pattern in this Bible, you think man, humanity, any humanity, their time error, our time error, you think that humanity come up with these road signs that lines up exactly what God predestined them to say through the numerical pattern of a parable? <laughs> Y'all better get off the gas and jump on board because I'm trying to tell you right now in the name of Jesus, his, every knee will bow to him. Ready? So this is fives go with fives because five chapter, verse five, five letters, five letters, five letters, five letters, five words, red words, red letters, okay? Red words is three, five. All right, verse five, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves. There's a five. And two small fish, but where are they so among so many? Verse 10 is two fives, because verse 5 is where it started. So verse 10 is two fives. Then Jesus said, one, two, three, four, five more red words to them. Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in numbers about 5,000. <laughs> now come on, guys. There ain't no man in this lifetime can put all that together and make it make sense. It's like we're trying to tell y'all right now on this video that you're watching. Matthew 19, 26. Jesus said to them and beheld to them and said, With man, this is impossible. As for God, all things are possible. So don't give me credit, Ricky Bobby, because it ain't me teaching y'all none of this. All right? Now, fives go with fives. You ready? John chapter 21. If you go to John chapter 21, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we flip way past it. But look, he turned right back to it. You see that works? Because we don't use the strings. The Holy Spirit knows exactly where he wrote everything. All right. Now, threes and fives go together. Ready? Starting at John chapter 21, verse 5. Then Jesus said to them, one, two, three, four, five. See? They answered to him, no. Right? So starting at verse 5, one, two, three, four, five, black words. Then Jesus said to them, grace, one, two, three, four, five. Children, have you any food? That means grace. They answered him, no. Four means change, but that's on a different video. See? <laughs> fives go with fives, just like in John chapter 5, verse 5, with all those fives. Hey, guess what? There's two sets of fives in John chapter 5. John chapter 21, verse 5. You see? There's, boom, right here. 21, verse 5. One, two, three, four, five black ones. One, two, three, four, five red ones. <laughs> Ain't he the most powerful and almighty and all evident you ever seen in your life? <laughs> Ain't his word uncorruptible and imperishable crown that you're supposed to race towards each and every day? <laughs> Ain't his beautiful word enough to give up all your life for? He who tries to find his life will surely lose it, but he who loses his life for my name's sake will surely have eternal life. <laughs> hey, don't you know? <laughs> I'm a 10th grade dropout who can't even read a tape measure. <laughs> What's your gift look like, Amplified? <laughs> Ain't this the most beautiful thing you ever seen in your life? 
Fives go with fives. Now watch this. Now threes and fives go together and season together. Okay. Because this is the third setting, right? 14, John 21, 14. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Okay, watch this verse. Break down three sections. Verse 15. So they had eaten breakfast. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, feed my lambs. Ready? Three sections. Boom. Hey, Peter, do you love me? Yes, you know I love you. I love you, three words. Boo, yeah. Look here, three sections. Tells him what to do. So do you love me? Yes, I love you. Feed my five-letter word. <laughs> One, two, three, and fives go together. Five. Now watch this. There is no coincidence now. Pay attention. Verse 16. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, ten my five-letter word. <laughs> ten my, ten my sheep, threes and five go together. See? Just like lambs. Feed my one, two, three, four, five. Ten my one, two, three, four, five. Because God never changes. His word is everlasting, everlasting. It's uncorruptible. It's an imperishable crown, guys. I promise you this much. Because watch this. Verse 17. He said to him a third time. Threes and fives go together. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, one, two, three, with five letters. That's three sets, that's three sets of Jesus' words with three words. And the third word is the five-letter word. Lambs, lambs and sheep twice. You see how he works? You see how he never fails us? Did you know that there's a good and bad side to everything? See, the good side to five is grace, G-R-A-C-E. The bad side to five is tempt, T-E-M-P-T, because God makes it rain on the just and the unjust, you see. So let's go over this scripture right here so there's no author confusion. Matthews, boom, there we go, five. See how he flips right to it for us in three flips. Okay, 544, this is Matthews, right? Five, 44 and 45. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. So Proverbs 16, 4. See how we get to it right name, name of Jesus. Proverbs 16, 4. The Lord has made all for himself, yes, even the wicked, for the day of doom. See how it works? Okay, let's watch this one more time. Romans 9, 23, 20 through 23. Romans 9, here we go. See how we flip right to it in the name of Jesus? We don't have to have strings. Romans 9, right here, 9, 20. But indeed, O oh man, who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed to him say to who formed it? Why have you made me like this? Does not the potter have power over the clay from the same lump to make one vessel for honor and another for dishonor? What if God, wanting to show his wrath to make his power known, endured with long, much long suffering the vessels of wrath prepared for destruction? I promise you God uses everybody. You prodigal sons, brothers out there, you get off the gas because I promise you. God uses everybody. Did you know the demon possessed people of this world serve God better than we do? Do you know they serve the, the God Almighty better than we do? Because they bring chaos into our life and have no problem about doing it. Well, that's God doing that. He has made all for himself, yes, even the wicked, for the day of doom. Job says to pray for those who despitefully use you. Job tells you that right here. Watch what Job tells you to do. Job, in the name of Jesus. Help us get there, Lord. Job, thank you, Father. Watch what he tells us. Boom. Hallelujah. Thank you for bear witness to the Holy Spirit. Job 42, 10. 
And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. That's because he prayed for those who despitefully used and persecuted him. You see, that's why there's so much division on this earth. First Peter 4, 8, above all things shall bear love to one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Did you know the devil knows the word better than we do? Did you know he knows that if you cover a multitude of sins, Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. What do you think got me to see his voice through the numbers? I had to purify my heart through 1 John 3, 3. And everyone who has his hope in him purifies himself just as he's, as he's pure. You see how it works? Thank you, Holy Spirit, for slowing me down. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. Amen. <laughs> my zealousness can be a stomach bug sometimes. 1 John 3, 3 says, And everyone who has his hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. The Holy Spirit. See? If you want the true powers of the Holy Spirit, you got to purify your mind. you got to let this, this rotten ground in here, this miry clay that you keep sinking in every single day, this, 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 this second, second Corinthians 10, 5 Corinthians 10.5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and keeping every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Woo! I promise you. It's well worth that. You already have the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2.16, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. You already have it. You just got to want it more than anything. James 1.21, to lay down all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Please, guys, this is for God, not me. This is for God Almighty, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the one who wrote this beautiful, beautiful evidence. He's the author and the finisher, the beginning and the end. He's the great El Shaddai. What is he to play around with? Nothing. It says, why fear man who can take your life? I fear God who can take my life and my soul. <laughs> this is why he moves me so much like this. Through the fear of the Lord is what got me to get rid of all my filthiness and overflow of wickedness. I don't want to lose this gift. Do you? If you have you have you not gotten it yet? If you haven't got your fatted calf yet, that means you're more anointed than me. That means the devil has you more lost than me. Right? Because everything has a good and bad side to it. If I mean G-R-A-C-E, grace. Well, your storm is your grace. Your storm, you gotta take the tares, five letters, and wheat, five letters, and grow together. So you gotta let the tares, I mean the tares and the wheat. And let them grow together, see? Because Jesus, three cross, Jesus, three nails, Jesus, three names above, rose on the third day, is all five words, five letters, five letters. Jesus, three cross, Jesus, three nails, Jesus, three names above, is all five letters, rose on the third day. The third is a five letter word. Fives go with fives. Five, 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 five. Okay? Well, you gotta take the tears the devil and satan both five letter words because god never changes what he does for one he'll do for all if five means grace for jesus five means grace for the devil and satan because god can't tempt man so if you come over here to james 113 bear witness to the holy spirit guys this is a long video but we have a lot of evidence on it for new evidence the holy spirit give me see now james 113 let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. So God can't tempt nobody. Well, he shows us in Job, him and him and the devil have a God and the devil have a beautiful friendship. Because he says, Have you not tried my faithful servant Job? They're sitting there having a conversation about tempting Job. Don't y'all know that God looks at you in the same manner? He shows no partiality with people. What he did to Job, he's doing to you right now. If you don't get caught up in self-pity or shame, he'll let you have twice as much back. If you pray for those who despitefully use you, he'll have, give you twice as much back. Hey, guess what? He don't want to hear you blaming yourself or the devil for all your problems. Because it says Job rent his mantle, shaved his head, hit his knees, and worshipped God. Worshipped him for his children and possessions getting taken from him. That's all we have to do is praise God through our storm. That's how we get the grace. See? And through temptation, we'll also make the way of escape. If you look up 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Thank you, Holy Spirit, getting us there quicker. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you 
except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. You can't learn how to grow if there's not a problem to grow from. Stop crying about it. That's mummer and disputing. Philippians 2.14, do all things without mummering and disputing. 2.15, that you may become blameless and harmless children amongst a crooked and preserved generation that you, as you become lights to shine amongst. See how that works? He just wants you to do all things without mummering and disputing. Okay? When a problem comes your way, he prays your problem away. Through temptation will also make the way of escape. That means grace, guys. You see? God uses this man. God uses the devil as a beautiful thorn planter. Ready? Paul gets revelation and, and the visions of paradise in chapter 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, down here in verse 7, it says, And least I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, he says, a thorn in my flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. At least I'd be exalted above measure. Booyah, hallelujah, what is a messenger? Somebody you sinned. It was given to him, it says. God gave him that thorn through the Satan. The messenger. So that way he wouldn't become conceited from all this revelation, you see. <laughs> That's what my anger is. I've gotten rid of all the chemical dependency using the word of God. But my anger is my thorn. That's what keeps me normal. That's what keeps me in. Praise you, Father, Heavenly Father, please take away this. See, that's what keeps me in an in, in abundance of, 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 of life that he gives me. It's because I because I know what he wants me to do through my praying and through my sorrow. And when I do that, He gives me an abundance of revelation to show y'all how to see it yourselves. I'm just Paul planting. You have to be Apollo's water for God to give you the increase. So don't think I'm a false prophet here telling you that God uses the devil as His grace because that's what that means. If God can't tempt you, then how is He going to break you down? Job 5.18 says, For He bruises, but He binds up, and He wounds, but His hands make hold. Does it say you have to do with any of that? For he bruises, but he binds up, and he wounds, but his hands make hope. And it's talking about God Almighty. So quit giving yourself credit for your problems. Matthew 4, 1 says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And that's Jesus, the Messiah, the Chosen One. Hey, guess what he's going to do to us Gentiles? He's going to have the Holy Spirit lead us into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil just like he did Job. And he's going to see if you're going to start praising for your problems. Once you start praising them away, hey, guess what? Those tests stop coming to you. You see how that works? Okay. So let's go here. So, ready? All five grace. Ready? The bread, the great pearl, the heart, the glory, the mercy, the light, three five, of the world, three five. Okay. The right hand, honor, the faith, the peace, the grace. All those are three fives, and they're all meaning grace. Why? Because the living water, one, two, three, and the third section is five letters. One, three, two, three. Why ain't the number three three letters? If, if, if God directs us in threes, and one and two is three letters, why ain't three three letters? Because the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost... The third one in line is our G-R-A-C-E. Threes and fives go together because the Holy Spirit is our grace. That's what you're seeing through the numerical pattern of the Bible and the numerical pattern of this life. Because one, two, grace. See? The Holy Spirit's sequence is grace. That's why threes and fives go together. You see how that works? Like, He is risen. One, two, three words. The third word is risen, five letters. He is alive. When you say that, that's one, two, three, and five letters. Threes and fives go together and season together. I love Jesus. It's one, two, three. It don't matter if it's in the book of the beautiful testament of Jesus Christ on this paper that he had us write down all this evidence on. The Alpha and the Omega is the beginning and the end of everything. And guess what? Even little pins. One, two, three. The third sequence is five letters. Threes and fives go together and season together. 
See how that works? Now watch what happens when you listen to 3 and 5. Job 5 and starting at verse 17. Because it's going to show you how to beat your problems. Okay? See how we turn right to it in the name of Jesus? Now. Okay, so your storm, five letters. Your tares in the wheat, you got to let them grow together. So that's five letters a piece. Death is five letters. Devil's five letters. Satan's five letters. And tempt is five letters. All those are bad five letters. Right? So Jesus, light of the world, is five letters. See? That's what you see. Mercy, grace, see? Faith, all those are five letters a piece. Those are good five letters. Now, because he makes it rain on the evil and the good, he makes... He makes the sun shine on the evil and the good. He makes it rain on the just and the unjust. Hey, guess what? Watch what happens. This is how you beat those problems, okay? All these fives that are bad, this is how you beat them. Go to Job 5, J-O-B, threes and fives go together in season. Verse 17, Behold, happy is the man whom God corrects. Therefore, do not despise the chastising of the Almighty. So you take a thorn. Uh -uh. You take a dead limb that you don't like about yourself. You find the scripture, the Holy Spirit gives it to you to cut it off with. Okay, you go 40 days and 40 nights, because Moses and Jesus both fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and, and then fleshly desires fasted away their food and hunger, for uh, food and water, Moses, and it just said Jesus hungered. So you take a fleshly desire, 40 days and 40 nights, you take a scripture and you cut it off with it. Okay? Now, those 40 days and 40 nights is very vital, okay? Boom! Behold, happy is the man whom God corrects. So there's Therefore, do not despise the chastising of the Almighty. Why? For he bruises, he binds up, he wounds, but his hands make whole. Stop beating yourself up. This is God breaking you down. <laughs> okay? Praise him through it. Behold, happy is the man whom God corrected. Job's trying to tell you to stay happy through your storm. Now, when you do that, when you stay happy, he's going to break you down, see what you're about, okay? Then he's going to make you whole when he sees that, shows you what you're about. Once you see what you're about, it's going to make it easier for you to cancel that out. Now, count down the miracles in Job 5.19. Count down the miracle. He shall deliver you in six troubles. Yes, seven, no evil shall touch you. Booyah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Proverbs 19.23. The fear of the Lord leads to set. The fear of the Lord leads to life, and he who has it will abide in satisfaction. He will not be visited with evil. <laughs> Proverbs 19.23. <laughs> See how that works? God tells us how to do this. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is stay happy through your problems, and when you get broke down, count down the miracles, you're going to fall six troubles. So that first fall, you're going to feel real ashamed and convicted. Oh, I can't believe I smoked a cigarette. You tell me not to, Lord. I know you don't want me to. See? Boom, you're going to go a couple weeks. You're going to fall again. Boom, six. Oh, man, six troubles. I got counted down six troubles. Oh, well, I fell twice. As you keep falling, the next time you fall, his yoke gets light, right? And his burden is it, it, no longer yours. The burden is no longer yours. See, all you are heavy laden, he will give you rest. Now, the more that you fall, the more you're going to get convicted of, oh, man. I don't want to do this no more. Why am I still falling for? I can see it a mile away now. Now it's called darkness because I see the light that lit up the, the darkness for me. I don't want that no more. I know the voice of the Lord told me I don't want to smoke cigarettes. Boom, you're going to fall again. Hey, guess what? You're going to fall six times. On that sixth time, it's, he's going to finally see that you don't want it no more. You see? If you stay happy through it. Every time you fall, you got to praise God for the fall. Okay? Don't blame yourself. It's not your fault. He's breaking you down. For he bruises, he binds up, and he wounds, but his hands make whole. Now, if you can do this process over and over and over and over six times, you count down the miracle. On that seventh time, no evil shall touch you. You know how I know? I, got, I did this same pattern, the same sequence. I got beat of meth. I beat meth. Pills. Every pill known for the man. Meth, pills, cigarettes, dip, drinking, cussing, vapor penning. Everything. I even cut up my medical marijuana card. Hey guys, I don't play around with him. I just do what he tells me to do. See? And that's where all the knowledge came flowing in. What do you think you gotta do through your problems, through your storm? Grace. To receive grace. Through temptation will also make the way of escape. Now, when you do this properly, verse 20, in famine he shall redeem you from death, because he'll fill you full of the bread of life. You won't have famine no more. 
and in war the power of the sword. So who holds the sword? No man can come against you. Psalms 105.15 saying, Touch not my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Anybody holding the sword can't come against you. Verse 21, You shall be hidden from the scrounge of the tongue, and you shall not be afraid of destruction when it comes. You shall laugh at destruction and famine. You shall not be afraid of the beasts of the earth, the devil. Right here, verse 23 is important. The covenant is the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the cornerstone of the field, and the devil is the beast. For you shall have a covenant with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with you. <laughs> John 6, 70 says, that, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Did I not choose you, and one of you is the devil? God chose his problem for us. you got to show the devil that you're content with your problem. Stop getting caught up in self-pity or shame. Just quit giving the devil ammunition to amplify a thorn. You see? If you don't show him it bothers you, you can't amplify nothing. He can't turn it into chaos and, and steal your joy with that. See? He has to be at peace with you once you show him that you're cool with the problem. Okay? So, boom. Here we go. For you shall have a covenant with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with you. You shall know that your tent, you, your body, is in peace. You shall visit your dwelling and find nothing amiss. <laughs> See how that's breaking it down for you? Now watch what, that, what the last verse of this chapter says. You shall also know that your descendants shall be many, and your offspring like the grass of the earth. You shall come to a grave at a full age, as a sheaf of grain ripens in its season. Behold, this we have searched out. It is true. Hear it and know for yourselves. They literally tell you that they did it themselves, and it's true, and it works. And that's what I'm trying to tell you right now, here today, on this day and age, on the 2024 model. You see, he never changes. I use that same sequence to break down all my chemical dependencies. Behold, happy is the man whom God corrected, so despise not the chastising of the Lord Almighty. Job 5.18, for he bruises, but he binds up, and he wounds, but his hands make whole. Job 5.18, for you shall be delivered in six troubles, yes, seven no evil shall touch thee. <laughs> How do you think I got all that memorized? Because I lived it out. I walked out the scripture. And he gave me remembrance of it. He gave me understanding of it. I have full understanding of what I did and what I need to do and how I have to show other people how to do that. I have to be the five with talents. We'll go out and get five more talents or he's going to take my talent from me. This is a talent that showed me how to be delivered of everything. That's all you have to do is, is praise God through your storm. Storm. And you'll receive grace for that. You understand? Okay, guys. It's starting to rain on us here. Let's go over some more fives, and then we'll show you some threes, threes and fives of, this, of these road signs. Okay, bride is five letters. What is our bride? Our woman. Okay, that's five letters. House, truck, chair, couch, words, phone, clock, store, price. All those are five letters. Happy, glass, class, spell. When you go to class, you learn how to spell. That's five and five. Your speed limit is five and five. Uh, speed limit signs is five, five, five. Road work ahead is five, 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 uh, threes and fives. Blind drive ahead is five, five, five. I mean, road work ahead is not five, five, five. But you see how the threes and fives go together and season together? Okay, guys, bear witness to this video right now because we're about to show you all the true powers of the Holy Spirit never fails. So Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did back then, it's safe to say he still does to this day. So threes and fives go together. Ready? Booyah! Hallelujah! B, three letters. Kevin, five letters. Three H, boom. See how it goes? Three in the background. V, cabin. See? Three, five. Now watch this. Big picture first. My bad. One, two, three, four, five. The cabin, a gathering place. <laughs> three and fives go together and season together. Ready? Three, five, five. One, two, three, four. The fifth word is one, two, three, four, five. Place. The fifth word is place. So the fives go with fives. See how that works? See how he tied it in to all this? He ties it in because he's the creator. He's the author and the finisher. It doesn't matter what it is. Romans 2, 11, for there is no partiality with God. Camp, boom, happy, five, tails, five. One, two, three, threes and fives go together. <laughs> Happy and tails are right next to each other. See how it works? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Doggy day, camp, and sleepovers. What does that mean? That means G-R-A-C-E. Grace. See how it works? God never fails us. He never changes. That whole pattern 
on these two signs, way two different businesses here. See, that's how that works. Romans 2.11, for there's no partiality with God. It just ain't. See, you got the red, white, and blue colors, three, and then you got a bunch of five-point stars. The American flag is made up in threes and fives. See, if you go over here, do not enter, do not enter, three, one, two, three, the third sequence is five letters, enter. You see how he never changes? You see how he never fails? You see how this is evident that God exists? Don't y'all know I need y'all to get this beautiful evidence out to across the nation to allow people to see that God is still here. He's been here the whole time. He never changes. He has never left to forsaken us. This proves that. This proves. This proves it. Jesus and the three crosses. And Jesus, right? So you got Jesus, the three crosses. Watch this. One, two, and the Savior makes three. Three sections to the cross. And Jesus is five, letter word. So threes and fives go together. Just like what? Three sections of the cross. And Jesus is a five letter word. Threes and fives go together. See? See how that works? God never changes. He never changes. Threes and fives go together. The cabin, a gathering place. The fifth word is P-L-A-C-E. Fives go with fives. One, two, three. Three words. Boom, five and five go together. Doggy daycare camp and sleepovers. Five letter words, five words, five everything. Five, 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 five. <laughs> Y'all have a beautiful, graceful day. Please jump on the board. Please subscribe at the bottom. Please like and share. Please let me know what number you need to go over. And we'll take it to the Holy Spirit and ask Him to reveal it to you through Scripture because that's where it began. That's where it started in the B-I-B-L-E. Old Testament, Poetry, New Testament. The fives go with fives. Just like it still does to this day. Y'all have a beautiful day. God bless you.